Uh oh, what's going on, everybody? I'll fill the fill the empty air for now. Uh, Kurt's mic is seems to not uh, not be working right now, but uh, <laughs> well, that's all right. We'll uh, we'll make do. How's everybody doing today? He sure does. Yeah, crisp and clean as ever. Hey, nice nice colorful background. I'm in. I'm in. You're in. Yeah, I'm in. It's right. showing up. Yeah. All right, we're back. <laughs> uh, yeah, no voice as well, always. My 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 job is over now. I'll uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll I'll return to uh, to my regular post. Oh, that's amazing. All right, so let me roll this back. What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining us on another Monday. We've got Orbit, uh, where we bring you what's going on in the GraphQL ecosystem. So, a couple cool things on our list, but before we dive into the list, as always, uh, I have with me the amazing, yep, this way, Trevor Blades. How's it going today, buddy? Hello, guys, uh, and hello, Kurt. I'm doing really well. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a good morning. It is a good morning. And Brandon in the chat, Michael, Xander, thank you all for joining us. We love to see you. I know my video is looking good. I cannot wait for Blades' uh, camera to arrive because then he's going to be Me looking too. crisp as well. So oh, cannot man. wait. Yeah, you know, I was, I, th there's, so my camera is currently being delayed because one, one item, the, uh, like the, the cable that connects my camera to the wall plug is on back order. So this morning I was thinking, I'm just gonna call the uh, the camera store and tell them, you know what, ship ship what you have. Oh yeah. And then ship me the ship me the cable when you when whenever it comes in. I, I just need uh, I need that crispy camera. Yeah. You know? Crispy camera. Uh, Gotta have the crispy cam. Got From it. From now on it's yeah. gonna be called a crispy cam. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. So uh, so that that's the plan. That's the plan. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And yeah, I cannot wait. And like, yeah, I mean, you know, you can run on a uh, battery for a little while. It does get annoying. I, I was doing that for months with my Canon. And I had the battery. Mm -hmm. I would always have to like make sure I put the battery in before I started and take the battery out. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Photography and videography. Bye. I break this thing out all the time. I did my kids' um, uh, school photos. Right? Yeah, you were virtual. saying last week, right? Yeah, yeah. So I did, uh, I, you know, I, I made them like, uh, you know, photo thing. It was really awesome. Uh, they hated it, but I loved it. So it was a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, I turned uh, this uh, space. I took the audio wall that you could a little bit of over here. Use that as a nice background. Did some backlighting behind them. Nice purple hue. Sweet. <laughs> uh, I feel like this is one of those things that's that's more more fun for dad than than it is the kids. You that's just like ninety percent of our activities. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Oh it was, it was man, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Um, yeah, they came out good. I was, I'm proud. I'm a proud dad. Proud dad moment. Good. Uh, yeah, yeah. What about you? How was your weekend? How's everything going? Yeah, you know, my weekend was pretty good. Um, my friend and I did did something that that uh, I I've certainly never done before. But uh, we got a dumpster fire up in the corner. Yeah, someone in chat um, called it out. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's what's going on, Chris and and uh, Brandon Leb? Uh, yeah, my my weekend was cool. I I worked on a video for a side project, um, and this was this was interesting because. It was shot by my friend who's a videographer. Um, okay. I mean, we, we did, he, he, I asked him if he could, if he could shoot it for me. Yeah. And he said, okay, let's have, let's have a Zoom call on Saturday. And like, I was thinking, okay, cool. Like we'll figure out what we want to shoot, like plan it all out so that he can go and shoot it and then give me the footage uh, later. Um, but no, we, we, we actually just got on a Zoom call and we shot the whole thing during the zoom call i was yeah yeah i was like there in the room on the zoom call and he was like okay like so what do you want me to do like what what do we need all right let's get this first shot this this one and like we just shot it procedurally through the whole thing no wow. no like no first we plan and then we shoot yeah. it was just like no just go um and uh and it was really really cool and it turned out really well 
Um, awesome. Also, my my first time using Reels, so uh, on on Instagram. So you know, I'm I'm, I'm I'm hip. I, I'm sign up like a, I'm like a TikToker. Uh oh, watch out, y'all. He's an influencer. <laughs> That's the term you're looking for. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, oh. yeah, so that, that was, that was probably, uh, probably the, the, the main, the main highlight. Um, yeah, made, we made lasagna last night. That uh-huh. was, that was pretty you know, good. Last night I made, that's awesome, my weekend. Yeah. I made an awesome dinner last night. So I went to this restaurant. I used to live in North Carolina, uh, in Wilmington and there was this restaurant and they used to make these amazing, like hot roast beef sandwiches. And they were so good that like, I was like, I got to make this at home. So like, I just started, you know, trying to figure out the recipe and like, I've pretty much got it down, but it's basically like, uh, like, uh, almost like a grilled cheese in a sense, but it's like a toasted grilled sandwich with like roast beef and Swiss mushrooms, peppers and onions. Oh my God. It's so Damn. good. But the butter, like the, the, when you like, uh, uh, when you're toasting the bread, it's actually butter, Parmesan cheese, and parsley, like a mixture oh. of those things. And you toast both sides while Dude. you're cooking the roast beef with the peppers and the onions and the mushrooms. You lay the Swiss on it, and it melts down, and you scoop it up, bam, and you put it on there, and you slap it together. Please. It's like a 50-pound like <laughs> sandwich, yo. It is terrible for oh, you. Oh, gosh. But my God, it is so good. It is so good. We make them about one or two times, uh, probably. Oh, what's up, Kyle? I did not finish uh, uh, SAO. <laughs> Because I only got, I went through the first part till they get out of like the the um, uh, SAO when they go back into the second part with the fairy world. I realized how much like I don't really like that part of the show anymore, so I just stopped. I abandoned it. But I watched uh, a Megalo, uh, Megalo Box, which is like another anime on Netflix. It was good. I like that one. I finished that. But I did finish that. Yeah, I streamed a little uh, Breath of the Wild. I did a DevRel AMA on Saturday on my personal stream, too. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah. I did not. Uh, I'm going to do Fire Force next. So it's next on my list. Somebody had already offered up uh, Megalobox, so I finished that. But I'm going to check out Fire Force. I've heard that that's pretty cool. Sorry, now we're derailing into anime, folks, but. <laughs> like anime. That's all right. Yeah, check. Speaking out. of Netflix, uh, my my girlfriend and I finished um, the the haunting of Bly Manor, and boy, uh, I gotta say, um, terrible show. Oh. <laughs> we, oh. we were both we were both just like so relieved to be finished. Yeah. <laughs> it was one of those uh. one of those experiences. Uh, it was pretty funny. Um, but I, I, I am, uh, I, I'm going to just go, go step back for a second. And, um, I wanted to, to share the, the, the actual video that like the end result of the, the, uh, the real, the, the, yeah, the end result of my video project this weekend. If anybody wants to check it out, it's 30 seconds. Um, you can go peep it and, and come right back. Uh, but if awesome. you're wondering, we're curious. You can check it out there. I'm very curious. I'm gonna watch that later. I just copied the link. I'm gonna send it later. So we got a question sure. from uh Janik, which is hi, are you the developers of Apollo Boost as well? So, I mean, we personally are not the developers of Apollo Boost, but yeah, Apollo Boost is like a Kickstarter kind of framework for uh uh using Apollo Client 2. Uh, the second version of it. But yeah, like the Apollo open source team does maintain Apollo Boost. However, if you're like starting a new project, I would recommend checking out Apollo Client version 3 because you wouldn't need uh, something like Boost. Most of that's just going to be boom and for you kind of uh, hit their ground running. So that would be my recommendation. If you're in a world where you're like already using Apollo Boost, maybe you, you know, come on to a project or something like that. Uh, we might be able to answer a question if you got something maybe just drop it in the chat we'll see what we can do you can also always reach out to us on twitter as well so nope psh, there we go yep psh, somewhere down here you'll see uh mm-hmm. our twitter handles so check that out you can reach out to us there uh because uh today we're going to be kind of covering what's new in graphql but we do love questions so if you got them ask them um, mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the stormtrooper helmet. Yeah, thank you. So it actually like if you press the button, will give you like the stormtrooper um, uh, voice. It's pretty great. Uh, I'm considering using it oh, for cool. an upcoming video. Actually, stay tuned. Maybe. 
it make an appearance. Um, but yeah. And thank you. Yeah, Mandalorian is so good. Oh, that scene, uh, the chase scene in the last one. I enjoyed that quite a lot. Change the, on your lower third to line up with your camera position. Oh, actually, so that's been something I've been thinking about. Yeah, I'm going to move that and take that out of there. Um, oh, true. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. And just actually put it over our videos one step right. at a time. Yeah, it's been on my list for a while. Uh, I will get to it, but thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's a, a really good suggestion. Um, <laughs> yeah, true that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess uh, without further ado. I just had to migrate from Boost oh, to yeah, Client but... because I couldn't find the way to, way to implement HTTP only cookie. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I mean, um, that that that's not entirely surprising just because apollo boost is uh like it as advertised it is like it, it offers kind of like a subset of commonly used apollo client features uh and and just to be clear apollo boost is for apollo client 2 which is right now uh one version behind the currently uh, the latest supported um, version that that we offer. So, uh, yeah, it was it, it, it's pretty common, uh, a pretty common like use case where you'd start out your app using Apollo Boost, and then as you're building your app, you you require you require more complexity, and yeah. so you then have to migrate from Boost to uh, having like a custom client. And so there's not, nothing wrong with that. That's like totally normal. Um, and as Kurt said. Um, if you're going to be migrating to Apollo Client, you might as well migrate over to Apollo Client 3 because, in a way, it, it kind of functions um, functions like Apollo Boost used to in that it's a batteries-included uh, solution. You only need to install uh, at Apollo slash client, yep. and it gives you everything, all the links, um, all, of the, all of the different, like, um, middleware and afterware that you need to set up all comes from the one package. Uh, so if you if you are making that change, um, I would recommend using that. And and uh, Mr. Tables asks, how is the migration path if and when that happens? Is it pretty smooth? Uh, yeah, I mean it all depends what your what your needs are. And I would say, um, you know, from my from my personal experience, that setting up links in Apollo Client. Uh, that that's like one of the one of the most common reasons somebody would migrate is if they need to set up a custom link, something that adds um, that adds to your outgoing requests or 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 affects like your incoming requests or doing doing different um, things like that. It's all like the APIs for all of those things are pretty easy to understand. There's a bit of a learning curve, of course, but uh, but I think that. Um, yeah, it, it, I, I would say it's pretty smooth, especially considering, you know, you're going to be doing the, all the migration work is going to be happening in one file, wherever you're instantiating your client, um, you're throughout your app, all your GraphQL queries, everything else, the way that you interact with your client instance stays the same. So, uh, from that perspective, I would say it's, it's really smooth the 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 number of files affected is one yeah yeah and, and just to kind of piggyback on that just a little bit um yeah the whole point of of boost was uh you know a uh, apollo client to introduce the links which is uh, a fairly complex um little bit of of uh as code or 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 like network layer management and not everyone needed uh, that flexibility that was available. Um, so, you know, it, it's 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 Boost was released as like the hey, you don't need all all this like control, finite control. You just kind of want to hit the ground running. You're doing a very standard use case. Um, you know, maybe you just have like some auth headers and things, but you're not really trying to break out of like um, uh, uh, and do something that's like very specific. Uh, like in the case of uh, 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 John Eek, which is like, you know, having to handle cookies and stuff over HTTP, at that point, Boost isn't going to work for you anymore because now you're saying like, oh, I need like to, it's like that progressive disclosure of complexity, right? It's like Boost abstracts all that for you, but now you need access to that complexity. You need to make a change there. Typically, 
So that is kind of that. And now version three takes this a step further and says like, okay, you can just work from the base uh, without needing something like boot, call it and go. And then if you need to get deeper and add more links, you can do that. You can do that right from creating your client. But again, most of the changes won't matter, except I will say this, if you are going from Apollo client two to Apollo client three, Local resolvers are deprecated. They'll still work. You won't have to change anything. You can continue to use V3 and never change them, but they're deprecated. So then going to something like V4, uh, which I mean is a ways off, but like that at that point, you have issues. Um, you know, you probably want to look at something like reactive variables in uh, version three anyway, just because, in my opinion, better API mm -hmm. for dealing. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. That was fun. There you go. Yeah. That's a, that, that's a, may, may, maybe you got, you got a, a full brain dump from, uh, from the both of us and, and Michael D. Graham chimed in in chat as well. Um, and, and, uh, and, uh, Jenny mentioned that, uh, that migration was pretty smooth for them. So, yeah, one file. um, there you go there. That's, that's the, the full picture on Apollo boost client migrating. Love it. And that's what we're here for. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> Damn. You caught me off guard with that one. I know. I was going to catch everyone off guard with that one. <laughs> yes. Awesome. All right. Cool. With that, let's get into our list. Yo, let's start talking about what's going on in GraphQL, right? Because that's, that's... what we're here for. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to flip this mm -hmm. over and let's take a look at the first thing. Are you guys working for or is this your private project? Oh, no, we work for Apollo. Yeah, full disclosure. This is like the official Apollo mm. GraphQL uh, Twitch channel. We both work for Apollo. I am a developer advocate. Uh, Trevor is a DX engineer. So we're both on the developer experience team. Uh, and yeah. Yeah. You work for <laughs> Mm -hmm. Nice. All right. So let's flip on over to the first thing, because speaking of developers and Apollo, Wah, wah, wah. Our first thing is, if you've been here for the last uh, uh, couple weeks, then you, you might have already seen us talk a little bit about this, but I am just so freaking hyped on this that I keep sharing it over and over because I'm not going to stop until the whole world knows. Uh, so what we've got <laughs> here is uh, the Apollo Developer Hub. So uh, what is the Apollo Developer Hub, you ask? Well, that is a great question. So uh, I like to think of it as accomplishing two goals. Number one. It's a one-stop shop to figure out kind of what's going on in the Apollo ecosystem, right? So uh, right here, you can see we have this lovely feed, uh, and this is gonna be updated with things like streams, blog posts, interesting stuff that we find from the community uh, and add to it uh, as we go. And you can always kind of come here just as like your first stop shop to say, hey, what's going on uh, in, in what's new in Apollo? And you can come here. There's a whole lovely, basically like timeline feed uh, of everything that's happening. And yeah, it's just a really great way to have very quick um, overview of what's going on in the community. Now, the second part that I'm so super hyped about is if we come down here to Apollo Collections. So Apollo Collections are, well, I'm gonna read it right from here. Handpick lists of essential posts, videos, tutorials, docs, and honestly, other things. Podcasts are in here, everything. Uh, to help you learn GraphQL and Apollo. Uh, so as you can see, we've already, we've got a collection for Android. We've got GraphQL uh, tooling and code gen, caching and state management, production ready graphs, Federation 101 for folks who are looking at GraphQL and a microservice architecture and there's going to be more we're working on a learning graphql one right now and that's going to be huge and i love to see that so you can always explore all the collections here uh but yeah you know we're working on doing a lot of stuff to really help uh, uh help developers have at least if not the full solution a primer into these topics of importance these things that you're going to face every single time that you're working with graphql so uh, you know, we dive in here, we take a look at production ready graphs, We've got everything uh, in here from like, uh, you know, opinionated guides on, on how to manage a data graph, all the way down to if I come down to the bottom, we've got books, uh, courses, uh, everything. So I mean, it's kind of like pick and choose what helps you learn the best and how much you want to invest in it. And hopefully, you could come here to this collection and everything. 
Steve. Xander, thank you for joining us. As always, we love having you. And yeah, we'll see you later, buddy. See you later, Zandy. Hey, uh, Kurt. Uh, you know when, when you were when you were showing people the, our collections feature, you mentioned the Apollo GraphQL for Android collection. And if if you've been hanging out on the stream uh, and and seen us talk about this uh, in in the past, you might notice that this is actually a new addition. Yeah to our, our collections. And I was just wondering if, if you wanted to uh, bring that up and, and touch on this a bit. It's uh, curated by our, our own Martin Bonin, uh, who he's he's the our, the developer working on the uh, Apollo Android client. And yeah. Um, and yeah, this is this is a brand new resource. Absolutely. Yeah. So these collections, uh, they're constantly going to be curated and updated. Uh, and so, you know, that's something like, and we're always going to be trying to source this from the people who are the most knowledgeable about this topic. So having uh, a raid, Tibor Yudavari with the raid. Awesome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Tibor. Yeah, love it. And Chaos Theory, thank you for the follow. I see that came in a little bit uh, ago. Awesome. Thank you all so much. Um, yeah, exactly. So as, as, uh, Blaze just mentioned, right? So we're going to the source. Martin, uh, maintains the Android uh, Apollo clients and you know he's very active in, in that community and so we are leaning on the experts to help us compile the resources that we think will help people be successful when they try to do it so again we're trying to clear pathways we want the shortest path for you between problem and solution and uh, we're super excited about developer hub because we feel that it's a really great thing that we can do to one uh, recognize and showcase community work Two, curate and compile lists of important topics to give primers or sometimes solutions to these things. Uh, and then three, lastly, uh, let you stay up in the know on everything that is going on uh, with the feed. So it's a it's a win win. It's like uh, all around everything I I've ever dreamed of. Uh, I love having this resource. <laughs> it really is because it really helps us. Like as a developer advocate, one of the things I find myself doing is content oh hey stream right like this is a form of content and mm -hmm. bringing awareness and no matter how much we create or how fast we create it we could never create enough to keep up with the demand of, of what the community needs their job to build awesome stuff with graphql so you know being able to lean on the community and also showcase their work it's really awesome feel good love it mm -hmm. yeah and and i i can i can uh I can share with you that one of the things that we're going to be, um, you know, just just like collections are going to be constantly evolving, constantly being curated, uh, the developer hub we want to continually evolve as well. And and one of the next things that uh, that I'm focused on um, doing for the developer hub is is adding or integrating in some way events. So um, yeah. events are are. Are, are going to forever be one of the one of the big cornerstones of our uh, our whole way of, of interacting with the community and 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 um, educating developers, and so we want to give give events uh, like a, a really um, stable place to live. Yeah, we 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 want to uh, we want to use Developer Hub as a way to to communicate to the community. Here's all the events that are are happening coming up. Uh, planned uh, and and so on. So you can look forward to that. Um, yep. There's a, that's a that's a little a little a little sneak peek into the future. But we'll we'll sh for sure be back on here um, when that Shout time comes. Off. Talking about that. Yep. Yeah, for sure. And uh, just real quick, touching on uh, something Robert Tables jumped in in chat, which he responded to, which is yeah, when you started learning about graphs and GraphQL, it, it becomes easy to actually picture. The entire world like as a graph and like yeah no you are not the only one who feels like that i have felt like that for a long time i mean we at apollo feel like that one graph feels like that you know i'm sure you have conversations with other people who are deeply invested in graphql neo4j uh, uh has been looking at graphs you know not necessarily through graphql but just as graphs and connecting data and connecting the world for years uh, and, you know, graph databases kind of like the kickoff of this, in my opinion. And it's just, yeah, you know, there's no reason. Like, there is a connection between things, no matter how, how far that might seem. Like, most of the world is 100% connected. Yeah, Mike, Michael Graham out in the chat talking. 
Uh, yeah, he got it. Uh, does a lot of Neo 4J stuff. You work for Neo, right? Is that correct? Uh, I believe so. But yeah, you know, they're doing amazing things, right? And it's like, you know, GraphQL has taken this idea and now it's at the network. And that's already how the world is connected to the server, right? And so there's a mm. lot of possibilities for what you could GraphQL and connecting, connecting. I would love to see a day and yeah. it's like it's one graph. You can choose to adopt part of it. You can you can choose to put part of your own stuff onto this graph and keep some things private. And like, I mean, it we get into this really cool world of like what does that look like and the trust. Like how you know, how do how do you connect from hmm. place to place to place as you travel around the internet? It's a really cool thing. We're just hmm. yeah, we got a long way to you go. You know what's you know what's an interesting thing is like to think about uh regarding like um projects and tech companies and and all of these all these things that would contribute to a singular data graph um there's so much technology shared between between projects between between software generally speaking like how many what what percent of of tech companies or what percent of of uh, online software are hosted on Amazon or what percent of software use uh, use some open source GraphQL implementation, be it uh, Apollo or something else. Yeah. Um, and and I like I feel like just just like on the basis that that we already share so much of our of our web in infrastructure, so much of the, the software that underpins other software um that 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 this is like a a, a reasonable ish uh you know future but um yeah that that's just that's that's just me uh yeah right putting putting my uh putting my future hat on and and um getting a bit crazy but yeah that, but there's nothing wrong no with i i i future I, huh? for sure for sure yeah, uh, real quick, just to jump it back to uh, uh, Michael Link, something awesome in the chat, Grand Stack. If you're not familiar, definitely check that out. Um, stack, it's actually something I've been trying to get more into recently because graph databases are not super. I did mess with Neo4j a while back. Uh, Cypher was pretty cool. I really preferred Cypher query language over uh, uh, SQL, um, but it just, I never really had something like a product or you know at a company where i got to really dive deep have the time and invest in i love it good stuff always good stuff coming from yeah like grass of grass mm -hmm. so i'm trying to make graph graphs yo dog so i heard you like, heard you like graphs so i put a graph in your graph <laughs> so you can graph while you graph <laughs> amazing <laughs> absolutely amazing all right so with that let's flip over to number two so today number two on our list is we've got uh carolyn stransky has been as part of the, like the i think it's like a google docs kind of like um uh, initiative has uh launched the first iteration of a new graphql faq page so i mean this is awesome like if you're new uh to graphql and you kind of want to know more about it, or maybe you want to point, or people are asking you about GraphQL, this is now a amazing place to come. So she worked with a lot of people in the GraphQL community, come up with these lists of questions and the answers to them. And I mean, it's kind of like that, like sell, you know, GraphQL to your boss type thing. You can come and drop them uh, into one single place and they're going to be able to go through and, uh, Yep, posting link now. Got you. Yeah, and I forgot the other one uh, for DevHub. So. <laughs> Developers. Um, yeah. So uh, this is a great place. Develop. To, yeah, <laughs> develop. So this is a great place to come here and get all your questions answered, or uh, answer. You know, be able to answer questions for other folks, right? So yeah, what is this? Yeah, exactly. What is GraphQL? Now you can send them right here to graphql.org. Pascal in the chat, what's up? Thanks for joining us. Uh, you know, and you look, is GraphQL front end or back end? These are questions I get all the time. Is it only for React or JavaScript development? What is a GraphQL client? Uh -oh. Why would I use? 
Uh oh, what happened? Uh, are we good? still still good? No, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Yeah, yeah. I just froze. Froze for on my side anyway. We froze for a second. It might just be me, my computer freaking out. Uh, but uh, sorry. Uh, 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 no. I'm just <laughs> uh, yeah. Let let us know if we froze. If you missed any of that. Anyway, I'm just going through literally reading the questions out. So it's not like you missed anything. Uh, if we did freeze up there. But yeah, so check it out, yo. Uh, it's a really great uh, primer. I've been using that word a lot lately on what is GraphQL. So I would definitely check this out. How can I contribute to the specification? Because you know what I would love to see? Directives and introspection. I know I'm not the only one. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe that's something I'll have to look at. Anyway, long story short, Definitely check it out. Share it with your friends and family. You know, uh, over your Zoom calls for Thanksgiving, you could tell your family what GraphQL is now. Yep. Yeah, awesome stuff. Gotta love it. American Thanksgiving anyway, right? It's not a national <laughs> holiday. But yeah. Yeah, they will be thrilled. I know. I, I've, been, I, I've been trying to explain GraphQL to my mom for like weeks. And now, I, you know, I just send her to that page. <laughs> your your other your other family members talk about you behind your back as that that the crazy family member who talks about GraphQL at the at the Thanksgiving table. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Every every family's got one. I tell you. That's it. That's it. Somebody. Hey guys, you should you should make a graph and and put all your data on it. Yeah. What if our ancestry was laid out as a graph and uh, you know. Uh, Connect that to our friends' families, everybody else's family. Everything is, hey, Grandma, guess what? Exactly. Directives show up in introspection now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly. Oh, exactly. Yeah. If you <laughs> Brandon, <laughs> Brandon is, 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 you know, you're, you're right. But I, I like to, like to think that, um, oh. but, you know, if, if, we, if we can, if we can turn the tides, if, 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 uh, if families would rather talk about GraphQL than politics, then then I think we're in a in a, in a better place. Yeah, for sure. Yo, that is <laughs> hilarious. So, uh, yeah, uh, Robert Stables, yo, I can't even listen. If you want me to keep fixing your printer and Wi-Fi, you're gonna have to listen to my nerd. <laughs> 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 uh, oh yeah, door to door. Yeah, have you heard about GraphQL? Yeah, it's a real game changer. Mm -hmm. I can make little pamphlets like zines, like, you know, GraphQL zines. Mm. Hey, we're maybe on to something here, you know? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. All right, well, with that, let's move over to our third item. You can stand out on the corner and, yes. and have like a little little kiosk yes. that you push around. Set up in front of the Home Depot, you know? Just, yeah, just 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 pull, pull a page out of the... Uh, <laughs> Out of the old Jehovah's Witness playbook and, and and roll with it. Absolutely, I love it. Yo, amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's a wavy arm, inflatable. Ask me about GraphQL. Oh, they can't see me. I'm waving my <laughs> arms around right now. Yeah, we're on the desktop <laughs> view. Uh, our next. I believe I believe you're talking about the uh, the wacky wailing inflatable arm flailing tube man. Whoa, that was a mouthful. Do it again. Wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man. <laughs> TM. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, yeah, so our next item, uh, Apollo Zone, Mandy Wise, uh, was on the Auth0 stream just the end of last week, uh, talking about mm. authentication uh, inside of uh, GraphQL and more specifically inside of a federated graph. What is a federated graph, you ask? Well, even if you didn't ask, I'm going to go ahead and tell you anyway. Um, a federated graph is essentially the microservices version of like, you know, REST APIs and having like an API gateway, very common pattern. Uh, so, uh, federation is essentially the, uh, a GraphQL equivalent to, this. you have, uh, one graph that is exposed, uh, to all of your clients and, um, that really is just aggregating together different schemas and it knows how to kind of tie the relationships between types on one schema to the other together uh, because you define that in your schema and so yeah it allows you to have a nice microservices architecture and still expose a single graph to all of your clients you know 
it's pretty neat myself. though if i do say so myself uh i think he's talking about the hot dog man accepted i'm scared to click on this i will do it because <laughs> you can't see my desktop so i'm gonna oh yes ask me about graft okay i'm gonna show this because this is hilarious oh my get back uh paste it over let's flip over real quick so that you all can enjoy this as well ask me about graphql i don't know if anyone's seen that movie um but yeah hilarious thank you for sharing that that's pretty <laughs> awesome you made that oh he memed for us that's amazing thank you kyle absolutely love it um, but yeah, you're definitely going to want to check out that, that video. Um, if auth is a question, which reminds me, speaking of curation, we actually have an auth, um, uh, uh, collection. So we're going to have to make an update and then we'll have to add it to the feed as well. So look out for that y'all. And that's what I mean. You can go, you're going to learn about this stuff here, but if you're ever just, you know, it's a Thursday afternoon or maybe morning and you're having your coffee and you're like, no, I'm curious, like, I don't want to wait for Monday to hang out with Kurt and Blade. So like what's going on right now? And you can just go to the developer hub and boom, all of your questions mm -hmm. will be answered. Pretty sweet. If I yeah. Say Speaking so, of collections, we should, we should make a uh, GraphQL meme collection. Can we please like all jokes aside? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Dude, we can. No, no, not, not all jokes aside, all jokes inside <laughs> the collection. And uh, yeah, we totally can. I can't. That's amazing. Yeah, we could do that. We have the power, folks. We have power. We can do. We can. We can even make it an unlisted collection, so it doesn't appear on the on the yeah uh, on the website, but we can still link to it. I love that. That's a great idea. And uh, yeah, we could put the jokes on the merch. I would love to have a shirt that would has that picture on. Maybe I'll make that. Actually. Open around. Oh, we're getting wild <laughs> up in here. Very wild. Ah, I can't find it. Okay. Uh, yeah. So let's see what else we got. Um, I where I had another one. Oh yeah. This is our last item for today. Uh, and or let me drop the link in Z chat first and I'll bring it up on the old big screen. Oh, I got new monitors and I no longer have to crop my widescreen monitor anymore. It's been amazing. Uh, 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 GraphQL Galaxy Conference. Coming up, folks. December, I don't know, 8th, 7th, 7th and 8th. There you go. It's right there. 7th and 8th. Uh, definitely check this out. Now, uh, uh, there is a free registration, but there is also a paid one. I always just like to, like, when something is paid, like, announce that out clear. You can still sign up for a lot of the stuff. Um, I will actually be moderating a panel at this conference um, and uh, on GraphQL durability. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm oh. very excited about that. Yeah, uh, Danielle Mann, who also works at Apollo, will also be uh, giving hey, a Apollo? talk at a Apollo. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so da uh, Danielle Mann, she's gonna be talking uh, about GraphQL for everyone, which is like GraphQL accessibility. So the data that we get back, like, it's always in JSON and like, it's hard to deal with. And so she's gonna talk about different ways of making data more accessible to more people, to the uh, dev adjacent folks who uh, also want access to a graph, like um, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a uh, product or QA or data analysts, right? Like data scientists, uh, you know, just literally anyone, design teams, like other people need access to this data. And then also uh, Ash is here. So Ash Narcisse is going to be talking about um, uh, GraphQL observability. Also a really good topic. Uh, so, you know, this is something to definitely look out for. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Mark Andre is going to be there uh, uh, doing the panel discussion. So as you can see, this is actually our Mandy panel. Wise is there. Yeah, Mandy's going to be on the panel with me. Tejas uh, uh, works at Netflix. So be a super cool conversation i'm super excited uh i cannot wait and i hope i see y'all there um and oh the panel is part of the free um thing the free registration at least Good come hang out with us 
please come join us for that. And uh, that's it, folks. That's my whole list. Dev familiars. That's hilarious. Of that. That's like a very D and D type joke. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Well, it's just like familiar is like a thing inside of D and don't know if it's meant oh, for that, okay. but it's still kind of funny. But yeah, I've been using Dev adjacent. I don't like non-technical because like. Let me tell you how freaking technical you have to be to be like a product manager, designer, or a QA uh, analyst, or like any of these roles, right? Like, they're very freaking technical. They just don't always technically write code. So I'm just not a fan of non tech. Yeah, marketing is everything is freaking technical. Like, if you look up the definition of technical, they're all jobs are going to pretty much fall under that umbrella. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just I've used Dev adjacent talk about uh teams that developers are adjacent to makes sense sure yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah absolutely but yeah all right so that wraps that up and then there's really not a lot coming out of apollo this week as far as streams i don't have a lot to all leave you with because it's a uh u.s holiday week here so i don't even think I, there's any other stream lined up for this week uh, we will be back next week, of course, with uh, more Orbit, more what's going on, and Launchpad will be back. I'm super stoked about building this Skate Spot app. I can't wait to dive back into that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and then what else? You got anything going on these folks should know about? Um, boy, uh, <laughs> go yeah, go watch go yeah. watch Kurt and Kyle talk for two and a half hours. Uh, we can <laughs> just r run that back. Um, no, but for real, uh, you can go, go find that, that, uh, on, on, on YouTube, on Twitch VODs. It's, it's up there somewhere. Um, on Twitch you can, right you can now. play that back. Uh, okay. Um, but yeah, for me, uh, let's see. Yeah. Not, not a whole lot going on. We just got a new teammate, uh, joining the education team. So gonna, gonna go make their first week a good one. And, uh, um, if you're looking for some some uh, some like web dev Twitch stream content, uh, I'm gonna be streaming on Wednesday at yeah. 6:30 Pacific. Um, that that's 6:30 uh, p.m. Pacific, and I'm gonna be up upgrade showing how to upgrade from Chakra 0 0.8 to the brand new Chakra version one. Um, so it's not exactly GraphQL, but uh, but it might might pique your interest and thank you for the uh you guys can That's watch nice. watch uh that stream you know uh, how we do you know, at your leisure yeah at your leisure yeah everything should be leisurely speak right i guess technically for us anyway um mm -hmm. but yeah yeah that's it that's all we got should we like raid some people you know yes let me uh let me let me see what the situation is here. While he looks for someone to raid, I will regale you with a tale of my ancestors. Please. Have any. Um, Aw, man. From my ancestors. Although there is a new season of DuckTales out, so that's something to look forward to. Uh, also, oh, if you're kind of into like animated shows or anime, uh, there's a new one on Crunchyroll called Onyx Equinox. It's the dope. It's really good. I highly recommend checking that out. They released the first episode this week. So good. Such a good show. Anyway, yeah, that's enough about that. Uh, and then also, what else have I done or do, am doing? I'll probably stream some more uh, this weekend, playing some Breath of the Wild on my personal stream. Um, I've been doing some short form videos about questions like what is learning in public and what is developer advocacy and stuff. So I might do a few more of those um but yeah oh we got a recommendation for dash ducks ducks all right metal. oh i think it's literally ducks let me see yeah uh wow, yeah that's, that's ducks right <laughs> uh ducks uh, unless the ducks are doing development i don't know um okay so let's see we're gonna well um let's see here we can. While you look at that, uh, uh, I got a quick question from uh, Rudix World, which is, have we talked about Hazura uh, 
um, on the stream. So not on, I mean, well, yeah, like some things like when Hazura had their conference, we talked about it here. This is more of kind of like a newsy type thing, like what's going on. But yeah, we do. And then uh, we really have another show called Mission Briefing, where we kind of like feature <clears throat> everything from like the GraphQL ecosystem. So if anybody from Hazura is watching and they want to come on, talk about it, let me know. Uh, we can make that happen. All right, cool. Well, um, we're gonna we're gonna raid today, Coding Garden. Uh, we we've raided CJ before. He's does an awesome uh, awesome web development stream. Streams a lot, uh, and and uh, I think you guys will have fun over there. Yeah. Um, Love it. Yeah. So we'll we'll kick that off now, and uh, and hope you guys enjoy. Have a great rest of your week. Happy Thanksgiving if you're if you're in America. Yep. And catch you next time. Deuces. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Uh.